How y'all doing guys? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. Hopefully y'all doing good. And for this video, man, I'm gonna spotlight um, a particular morph or a gene in hog nose snakes. I think I'm gonna start doing this maybe on like a weekly basis or every two weeks where I kind of talk about the different genetics in terms of hog nose snakes. Kind of going through all of them just for people who are new to hog nose snakes or want to get one as a pet or you want to get one as an investment animal. Just kind of showing y'all what you know what I'm saying what the different color morphs or pattern morphs that we have as well as what they look like when you combine uh, different traits with each other so the first one I'm gonna start off with is the sable morph which not a lot of people have is it's kind of a, an expensive morph but I think it, it has a lot of potential in terms of producing some cool looking snakes so basically the sable morph is a recessive morph or is a recessive gene so um, in order for the snake to visually show that sable morph, it has to have two copies of the, of the sable gene. So it needs a copy from the mom and it needs a copy from the dad. And the sable gene produces a dark animal. So this is going to be the darkest hog nose morph that we have right now. Other than the newborn super arctics, uh, the super arctics, when they're first born, they're, they're basically jet black. And as they age, they become lighter, especially like the background. Um, but the sables, um, as they age, they become darker. And as you can see in these three pictures, all these are sables and they all kind of look different. The one on the left is pretty dark. And then the one in the middle and the one on the left, as you can see, it's a little lighter. But at the same time, it's more of a darker uh, color compared to other hog noses. And like I said, um, they're going to get darker as they age. So now let's look at the sable gene when you combine it with other different morphs and other genetics. So we're gonna start off with the incomplete dominant um, genes and we are gonna see how, when you combine that with the sable, what the animal looks like. So the first one is gonna be the anaconda gene, which is an incomplete dominant, which means that the snake only needs one copy of the anaconda gene to visually express um, the anaconda. And because it's incomplete dominant, if the snake has two copies, of the anaconda gene, you'll get a super form. So on the left, you see the sable anaconda. So basically, um, the anaconda is a pattern reduction. So you get that dark color animal with a reduced pattern. As you can see, this one is actually has like a greenish color to it, which looks really good. Um, I, in my opinion, I think this is like the true anaconda morph of the hog nose snakes because of that greenish color, it makes it look like an anaconda in terms of the pattern and the color. And then to the right, you see the super form of the anaconda, which is the sable superconda. So basically it is the sable gene with um, completely no pattern other than the pattern on its head. And as we see, it's a darker animal um, without a pattern. So that's pretty cool. So the next gene we're going to talk about is another incomplete dominant, and it's the Arctic gene. So for those who, who don't know, the Arctic gene is kind of hard to, to pick out. Um, basically, it kind of fades the, the background pattern a little bit, and then it highlights the pattern. So you'll see more of a darker color around the edges. And um, it's really cool. As you can see, um, these pictures it really changes the looks of the, the sable gene. And like I said, it highlights the patterns and it lightens up the background of the animal. And so the sable arctics are known as black ice for whoever was the first one to um, produce this morph. So it's definitely really cool. Um, like I said, and to my knowledge, I don't think that there are sable super arctics yet. If they are, I haven't found any pictures. So there's, you know what I'm saying? There's no telling what that's going to look like. Uh, so now after this, we're going to go into some of the recessive, um, morphs or genes that are combined to the, uh, sables and we can see what that produces. So the first one we're going to talk about is combining the albino gene to the sable. And so these kind of conflict a little bit because the sable gives you that dark pigment, but then the albino takes away the dark pigment. So when you combine these, you get um, what's called a sunburst. So the sunburst is basically the sable albino. And if you watch my videos, my snake Cheeto is a sunburst. So she's a sable albino. So double visual recessives. 
Now let's say you have the sable albino and you add the incomplete dominant gene deconda, the pattern reduction, and you see in the middle, aka a solar flare. So this is going to be the sable albino conda. So basically the sable albino with a pattern reduction. And now look at this one to the right. Um, this has four genes, so two recessives, two incomplete dominants. So this is when you add the sable, the albino, the arctic, and the conda, and you get a very rare animal. To my knowledge, this is the only one that exists, this picture right here. And so, like you see, you get that orange color from the sable and albino mixed together, and then you get the reduced pattern from the anaconda gene, and then the arctic lightens up the background, but at the same time, it highlights the pattern. As you can see, um, the pattern of this snake, you see a darker orange around it. Um, the, pad, the, the outline is a lot darker than the orange that's in the pattern. So that's very cool. And like I said, to my knowledge, um, there's no super arctic sable. So just imagine the sable albino super arctic conda or the sable albino super arctic super conda. Those are some things that I don't think have been made yet. All right, so next, let's get into the next recessive gene that involves the sable. So let's say we take a toffee belly, which is another recessive gene, and we mix it with the sable. As you can see, the, the toffee has a lighter background, and it has a kind of a different orange color compared to the albinos or the sunburst that we saw in the previous slide. So whenever we combine these together, we get what's called a Muay Thai. So as you can see on the left is the sable toffee belly and it kind of um, gives it more of an orange color, darkens it up a little bit. It produces a pretty cool looking animal. And then on the right, we have the sable toffee belly conda. So we're adding that incomplete dominant and the conda gene to it that reduces the pattern. And that's known as a candy. So what happens when we have the sable toffee belly super conda? We have right here this picture and it's called a candy cocktail. So that looks pretty cool. I love that orange color. Um, not too many people have this. Um, like I said, it's pretty hard to make, but it is possible. So let's move on to the next recessive gene. And so what happens when we add the exanthic plus disabled? So um, this, is, this is fairly new. I think this combination was first created this year. And so uh, the exanthic basically removes the reds from the animal. Um, they're already kind of dark. They have the lighter background and then um, the darker saddles, more of the grayish color, grayish white animal. And it has a lot of variations within the exanthic. And so when you combine these two, look what you produce. A blue snake, man. And when I first seen these pictures, I thought it could have been doctored up or photoshopped, but I don't really think it, it is. When you kind of look hard, when you kind of go back and look at these two animals, you can combine them, you can kind of see how it can give off this bluish color. And so this right here is known as the storm cloud. That's what it was named. And to my knowledge, I don't think it's been mixed with Arctic. I don't think it's been mixed with Conda. I think this is just the first one of this kind. So just imagine, you know what I'm saying, if you mix this combination right here with the Arctic, that's going to lighten up the background and then highlight the patterns a lot more. And then just imagine more of a reduced pattern with the Conda or just this blue animal without a pattern if you had the super conda version of it. So it's a lot of untapped potential in this. And in my opinion, this is probably my favorite combo in terms of the sable gene. All right, so now let's get into some more combinations. And so right here, um, we, have two, um, we have two recessive genes. We have the caramel, and then we have the Dutch or Evans hypo. And so they're, they're kind of, pretty similar in terms of looks. They both have a reduction in melanin, um, but the animals don't have the, those red eyes like the albinos. And so when you combine the, the caramel and the hypo, you get what's called a frosted, uh, which you see on the right hand side. So what if you combine that frosted with the sable and you get a four gene recessive animal? And so now you have the caramel, you have the hypo, and you have the sable. 
you get this animal right here, AKA the permafrost. And this is a cool looking snake, um, especially the picture on the right hand side, you get a very um, really good picture of the, the, what it looks like. And this, this right here may be one of the most unique hog nose snakes to date. And like I said, it's a three gene recessive um, sable kind. It's a, it's a three gene uh, recessive hog nose snake. It's not too many three gene animals. And um, this is probably my second favorite hog nose uh, combination outside of the, the storm cloud that was in the, the previous slide. And so, like I said, um, this is basically it. Um, let me see. From um, the look of it, you know what I'm saying? There's so many, you know what I'm saying? This is it. This is all we have in terms of the sable combining the genes. There's so much untapped potential. Um, like I said, to my knowledge, this is this permafrost is the only um, three recessive gene animal that combines with the sable. So just imagine all the other combinations that you can add to it that haven't even been done yet. That's the one thing I love about hognose snakes. It's not like the corn snakes. It's not like the ball pythons where you have three or four recessive traits and you feel like everything is being done. It's just so much untapped potential. So these are all the combinations that I know about scouring Facebook and also scouring morph market and everything. And um, before I get done, I do want to have a disclaimer. None of these pictures are mine. None of these snakes are mine. I got all these pictures from Facebook. I got all these pictures from morph market. So I don't take credit for any of these animals. I just, you know what I'm saying? I thought they were pretty cool looking and I just wanted to use this as educational purposes to kind of get people more interested in hog noses so y'all can share my passion. But if y'all know any other sable combinations that I didn't have in this video, man, let me know down in the comment section. Also, what are some combinations that you think are gonna look cool? And also, last but not least, let me know what trait y'all want me to, to cover in the next video. If y'all like the video, man, leave a like, leave a comment, also subscribe to the channel. I got plenty more. Um, I'm glad that y'all watching it, man, and uh, peace out, and be on the lookout for my next videos.